most people see only a blue-gray blur through the car window when they pass it. Sagebrush covers an estimated 153 million acres of the western United States, but it's commonly seen as drab and unimpressive and gets little attention. Yeah, we're a pretty fast-paced society, and uh, things that aren't uh, flashing red lights or have bright colors don't seem to attract us. So we do bypass sagebrush as we go down the highway, thinking that it's just sagebrush. You can tell sagebrush by its pungent odor. But when scientists talk about sagebrush, they're usually referring to more than just this aromatic shrub. They use it as a general term to describe a wide array of plants, including antelope bitterbrush, wildflowers, and grasses that grow in combination with sagebrush. Well, it's uh, part of the landscape. It's been here forever. Without it, there are certain components of the landscape that uh, can't function properly. Researchers now estimate that various sagebrush species provide food and shelter for as many as 87 different mammals, 297 bird species, and 63 kinds of fish, reptiles, and amphibians. In winter, standing above the snow, sagebrush provides food for mule deer, antelope, and elk. Its deep roots recycle nutrients through the soil. But just as land managers are beginning to appreciate sagebrush, an energy boom across the West threatens to uproot it. In their quest for natural gas, energy companies are clearing sagebrush to make room for drill pads, roads, and pipelines. And as sagebrush disappears, so do species that depend on it, including Western icons like the sage grouse. Sagebrush is the desert's forest. And as development carves up the sagebrush grasslands, scientists worry that remaining fragments will not be big enough to support species that depend on this shrub. Learning to appreciate this grayish-blue blur as a rich and complex community could be the first step toward maintaining sagebrush as a vital part of the western landscape. For This American Land, I'm Gary Stryker. <laughs>